film I first heard of in 2017 and finally saw in I believe September of 2018 and has since always found its way back into my head as well as my DVD player. I've wanted to make a video about this film for nearing two years now, never mind wanting to do videos in general, but with that time and reflection on this film, I've decided to look at it in parts. Will the parts come out sequentially? Probably not. A lot of things in my life take priority over making these videos? Most definitely. But for now, there's time and there's drive, and I want to talk about what has become one of my favourite films. If you have seen it, or haven't but want to watch anyway, then here's a little bit of background. American Annals is a heist film by director Bart Layton about the real-life robbery at the Transylvania University Library, where four young men attempted to steal multiple valuable first editions of world-famous books, including Darwin's Origin of Species and the painting collections of John James Audubon. The film follows the lead-up execution and aftermath of their heist, featuring Barry Keegan as Spencer Reinhardt, Evan Peters as Warren Lipka, Jared Abrahamson as Eric Borsuk, and Blake Jenner as Charles Allen II. But the interesting thing is that the real culprits feature in this film alongside their acted counterparts. But we'll get into that in a bit. First, I want to talk about genre. The heist film, a subgenre of the crime or caper, is well established in the world of cinema, and it has very recognisable tropes and structures. The template for which many accredit the 1950s film The Asphalt Jungle, directed by John Huston, where criminal mastermind Doc puts together a team to steal a small fortune's worth of jewellery. From the words of Charles Derry, the genre is composed of all those works that emphasise the efforts of a diverse group of criminals to pool their talents, generally under the guidance of a father figure, in order to commit a perfect crime which requires split-second timing. Since the crime is a robbery, one might consider the virtual victim the actual location that is to be violated, such as the bank vault, racetrack receipts truck, the armoured car, or in our case, a library. We can put this into a slightly briefer list, stating that heist films build a team, and only God knows it. Anything about blowing up real bank vaults is Joe Bang. Joe Bang? That's a legend right there. You know where he is. No, I know where he is. We can't do it without him. Involve meticulous planning. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Say we get into the cage and, and through the security doors there and down the elevator we can't move and past the guards with the guns and into the vault we can't open. Without being seen by the cameras. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention it. But the heist fails and the plan falls apart. Check on the description. We don't need a description. I'll tell them we got them. Though a classical trope somewhat subverted by the more modern films like the works of Steven Soderbergh, where crime can actually pay. And finally, that there is no personified victim. If I was to ask you to think about the heist films from the past few decades, I'm sure you'd find them conform to some of these rules, if not all. But of course there will be some deviation. It's a very malleable genre. American Animals also embraces the points on this list, bar one. How it differentiates itself is particularly interesting, as it's done through its use of The unique structure of American Animals swaps between dramatisation of events and interviews with characters' real-life counterparts, as well as those close to them. This may sound gimmicky, but are employed so well that they play an integral part of hitting the emotional notes of this film. It is used to punctuate themes and provide exposition, shown in one of the early scenes where young Spencer struggles to define and express himself and his passions, and then real-life Spencer tells us why and who he is. My father, he is uh, an engineer. My mom is a stay-at-home mom, I guess. Let me stop you there. It's great. I suppose what we'd really like to know is about you. Like uh, hobbies and, and stuff. What do you hope to express with your work? I mean, who are you as an artist? Growing up, I had a a desire for some kind of life-altering experience. I started to read about other artists. They were always affected by some kind of tragedy in their life and had to suffer a great deal. Van Gogh ended up killing himself. 
Monet went blind. I felt like they understood something more about life that I wasn't getting to experience. Art has to be about more than just my life is great and I'm really good at drawing. It's also used for comical moments and moments of important characterization, but every time we find ourselves moved away from the dramatization, it serves a purpose, and the most significant purpose is to break our suspension of disbelief, to make the viewer see and feel the pain, the remorse and the cruelty of our character's actions. My favourite edit in the film is this one, where Evan Peters Warren states the librarian needs to be taken out, and we cut to the real-life victim, Betty Jean Gooch, for only a few seconds. The librarian is the single biggest risk to this entire operation. She needs to become a non-factor as soon as possible. And with no words, just to remind the audience they're not speaking about a fictional character, but they're discussing harming a real human being. It works so well because our realization then carries back on into the reenactment. Please sign by the. <laughs> The use of Leighton's documentarian background and the inclusion of interviews differentiates from our list of heist genre conformities by emphasising the harm they have caused to the Transylvania University librarian Betty Jean Gooch. Other heist films, new and old, may have an antagonist or antagonists to our criminals that push them to commit the robbery, are the person or people that they rob, or the person who tries to stop them. Heist films generally do not have a personified victim. The target is a thing or a place or someone the film presents to us as deserving of what's to come. Generally we feel bad about characters' failures, we want to cheer them on to achieve some ill-gotten gains, and complementary to that, we usually care little for security guards or anyone else who gets in the way. And so with Leighton not just including Gooch into this narrative, but dedicating a good chunk of the final section of the film to the real life culprits of the heist speaking of and showing their regret and guilt for the harm they had caused this woman, and having BJ herself conclude the film with her thoughts at some of the major themes of the film, Leighton has personified the victim. I think they wanted things to come easy for them. They did not want to work for a transformative experience. They didn't want to help other people to achieve a transformative experience. I find them all very selfish. And I still have trouble figuring out how a person crosses a line in their own mind to be willing to hurt another person to get what they want. And I think that's, once you've crossed that line, I think it's a dangerous line to cross. Leighton created a film that differentiated from the structure of the genre, and in doing so delivered a heist film that emotionally resonated and impacted the audience in a way that I never experienced within the genre before. I would name American Animals one of the best heist films of its time, and in my mind will be a valued highlight in the genre's history. I hope in the years to come that American Animals will be more widely viewed and recognised, and I will continue to recommend it to anyone who will listen. Thank you.